नमस्कार म रुद्र काफ्ले उस्तुन मेसेच्युसिस बाट व्हाट वी आर डूइंग इज वी आर लर्निंग न्यूटन्स लज अफ मोशन सो प्रोबब्ली एभ्रीवान हु इज वाचिंग माइ फेसबुक लाइव फेजिक्स इज पन और और द माइ पोस्टिंग इन यूट्यूब प्रोबब्ली यू आर इन्जोइंग माइ लेसन्स माइ भिडियोज इफ यू हेव एनी इनपुट्स इफ यू हेव एनी क्वेश्चन्स इफ इफ यू हेव एनी क्वारीज इफ यू वॉन्ट टू आस्क एनीथिंग सो प्लिज राइट एज कमेंट एट द बटम सो टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस टू न्यू कन्सेप्ट टू यू एंड आई होप द पेरेंट्स और द टीचर्स हु एवर इज विथ यू विल हेल्प इन दिस लेसन right so when you do let me repeat something uh, i am telling the same thing again and again probably it might be sometimes uh, uh, like boring but uh, if you are uh, small children uh, if you are uh, uh, like you cannot do any experiment by yourself self safely please don't try please take help of your parents or teachers or some other people who are around you so uh, the two uh, concepts uh, today i am going to introduce are Uh, let me uh, uh, tell you those concepts towards the end but before that i want to do a small demonstration okay so uh, i have a chopping board here so uh, this is a chopping board a wooden board uh, 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 see uh, i am using all the uh, gadgets or the equipments or the uh, appliances which are in my kitchen or in my bedroom or in my living room around me right so that you guys can also repeat those experiments in your home around you so because what is the name of the uh, program physics is fun so we would like to learn some physics doing some fun activities okay so i have this uh, chopping board here right this is the chopping board uh, which we use in our kitchen uh, made of wood let me bring close to you okay and uh, i have this same uh, old device i showed you guys last time so this is a computer right so one side is a uh, smooth and the other side is uh, some uh, uh, a little bit rough surface okay so i would like to do one experiments please experiment here please watch very carefully okay one quick uh, question i would like to ask you is um, can you hear my sound well so please let me know if uh, uh, if the sound is not coming well so i would like to uh, i would like to adjust my volume so um, i believe the sound is good okay so what i am going to do Uh, is a very very simple experiment a very very simple uh, uh, demonstration but it is a very very important concept in physics okay uh, and very very important concept and very very important thing in our daily life so uh, i showed you these two gadgets with you these two appliances with you one is a simple chopping board and the other one is comforter you don't need to have this kind of specific specially designed comforter you can use any device any kind of block or even uh, books uh, or even calculator or cell phone whatever you have around but please when you do experiments please do the experiments safely okay please uh, like so if you if uh, if you hurt yourself by doing the experiment that doesn't make me feel happy so you guys need to be safe first please do repeat any experiments which i do here being safe okay so what i'm uh, uh, what i'm going to do is i am putting the comforter right from on the smooth side on the top of this chopping board and then what do i do is i lift the chopping board very uh, slowly okay so uh, probably you can see so what i am doing is i am lifting the chopping board so do you see uh, the comforter is uh, uh, in touch in contact with the with this chopping board and i am lifting it up lifting it up lifting it up lifting it up please watch now what happened what did you see what did you see what did you see could you please type what did you see okay you saw the uh, computer uh, 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 slid down right it moved down right so now let me uh, reverse the surface what does that mean let me put the rough surface on top of this in contact with this uh, chopping board instead of the smooth surface then let me lift it up i am lifting it up lifting it up lifting it up probably you see my experiment i am lifting it up see i i have lifted higher than previous i have lifted higher than previous please see please see see it is quite high 
it is quite high now see still the still the comforter is in contact with the chopping board see watch it do you see that do you see that still it is in contact with the chopping board why so please continue yeah watch watch it watch it it is almost vertical you see almost vertical almost vertical almost vertical now it slid down now it moved down now please i will give you a minute to think about it why why did it slide uh, why did uh, when i put the smooth surface of the comforter in contact with the chopping board right uh, so i lifted the uh, i raised the raised one end of i raised one end of the chopping board slightly and what happened what happened it uh, immediately started sliding down but uh, when i repeated the experiment with the rock surface in contact with the chopping board so i uh, i raised it i lifted the one end of the chopping board pretty high but still it was in touch with that so what is there why is that see the same chopping board uh, the same comforter is there the same chopping board i have not changed anything on the chopping board uh, i have uh, i just switched the surface right i just switched the surface right Pre, uh, first time i used the smooth surface and then later i used the rock surface so this very important idea and i see the somebody has written there friction fantastic thank you so much right whoever wrote friction i love you thank you right so that is friction that is friction friction is very very important force it's a kind of force it's a very very important kind of force uh, in uh, in our everyday life it uh, you can encounter friction all the time you can encounter friction all the time without friction we cannot survive we, without friction we cannot work without friction we cannot do several kind of things so that is friction so is friction always good no so friction is not always good so sometimes what do people say friction is a necessary evil what do people say friction is a necessary evil what does that mean so we need friction what does that mean we need friction it is necessary but it is evil what does that mean so it also does some kind of harm we need to understand that so what we always try what we always need to try we need to understand the concept we need to understand the physics behind it and we need to apply for the best of humanity that is the goal of this class okay make sense so uh, what happened here so uh, when i put the uh, smooth surface right so there was comparatively less friction right so when i put the object this way okay uh, so if you are teachers or students of higher level please answer my question so when i put this when i put this comforter on top of the on top of the uh, chopping board right on top of the chopping board and then lift one side of the chopping board right how many forces are on this comforter how many forces are acting on this comforter can you please try please think about a minute how many forces are acting how many forces are in play on between the uh, comforter and the chopping board what are those forces could you please try could you please think about it could you please type could you please type if you are little children please ask answer that question to your uh, to your uh, parents or seniors so they will type okay so what's happening here what's happening here how many forces are there there are three forces somebody wrote three forces one force uh okay so let's think about this so see this object see this object is naturally in the earth's gravitational field because we are we are on the earth we are on the earth and naturally this object is also on the earth right so there is gravity there is gravity so when i put a uh, lift one end of the chopping board what is one force what is one force gravity in what direction vertically downward so it doesn't matter whether it is in the inclined surface whether it is on a flat surface whatever you think 
right? Whatever you consider, gravity is always vertically down. That's why apple fell down. That's what Newton observed, right? That's what Newton observed. That's why apple fell down. So when you jump, right? When you jump, what happens? You fall down. Why? Because there is gravity, right? Okay. So so what is happening here is there is force. There is force between. Uh, there is force between uh, the. Uh, there are, there is one force uh, when I put the object here. So that force is gravity. Is that only the force? No. There are other forces too. What are the other forces? What are the other forces? There is another force according to Newton's third law of motion to every action there is equal and opposite reaction. To every action there is equal and opposite reaction. What does that mean? See, uh, this object is in contact with the chopping board. The comforter is in contact with the chopping board. Right? Right? The comforter is in contact with the chopping board. So it is pushing the chopping board down. Right? It is pushed because it is in contact. It is in contact with that. Right? So because of that, because of that, because of that, from Newton's third law of motion, what we definitely can tell is the chopping board is pushing this up. But we need to be careful. Is it vertically up? That is, a, this is a very critical question. And this is a very, very big misconception in students of physics all over the world. Okay, we need to be very careful. What is the direction of uh, reaction force? By definition, it is perpendicular. Right? To every action, there is equal but opposite reaction. If I stand, if I stand, my weight is pushing the floor downward. That is the action, right? And the floor is giving me reaction vertically upward. The same thing happens when I put the comforter here on, the, on top of the chopping board. There is action force. The comforter pushes the, the comforter pushes the, what? Chopping board vertically down. And the reaction due to chopping board is vertically up. Make sense? But now when I make slant surface, Story changes. Story changes. We need to be careful. The story is not easy. Mathematically very complex. Please don't worry. If you are a college student, you can do. But if you are, who are uh, listening to me, who are watching me, if you are uh, of lower class, right, if you are a child, please don't worry, right? I will explain that. Don't worry too much mathematics at this point. You will learn, right? When courses pro when course progresses, okay. So let me explain. So uh, uh, when uh, the surface was flat like this, uh, when this object was on top of the chopping board, right? The weight pushes this chopping board vertically down. Make sense? And chopping board pushes the that object vertically up. When I uh, when I lift it up, right? It still pushes vertically down. The weight is vertically down. Right? But the reaction force is not vertically down. The reaction force is perpendicular to the surface that way. If I lift it up, it is, uh, it is again perpendicular. So let me use the rough surface like this. Right? So perpendicular to that. What does that mean? So let me use this ruler. Right? So here. See, the, uh, right now, this uh, ruler, you see ruler? It's vertically, uh, it is uh, pointing vertically up. So now, when I lift it up, please watch. What is happening now? What is happening now? This ruler is always perpendicular to the surface. But it is not perpendicular to the floor. So that is the direction of the reaction force. That is the direction of the reaction force. Uh, so that is the, uh, that is the uh, direction of the, uh, that is the direction of the uh, direction of the uh, the uh, uh, normal reaction. So normal reaction is always perpendicular to the surface. Okay, does make sense? Okay. So there are two forces. We counted two forces. What was the one force on this object? One force was one force was what gravity, which was vertically down. 
okay? One force was gravity which was vertically down, which is nothing. We uh, know what is this? Weight of this object. The second force is what? Normal reaction, which is always perpendicular to the surface, <coughs> right? And what is the third force? That's what we are going to trying to learn here. The third force is nothing but friction. Friction. F R I C T I O N. Friction. So that force is friction. So when the two surfaces are in contact and try to slide on top of each other, then there comes a force called the force of friction force of friction okay so the force of friction uh, uh, do you recall my first class do you recall my first class i told you that there are four kinds of forces what are they could you please recall there are four kinds of forces in nature those are called fundamental forces in nature what are they the first one, the first one is gravitational force. The second one is electromagnetic force. The third one is weak nuclear force. The fourth one is strong nuclear force. Those are the four fundamental forces in nature. Now, see, we, we recall the four, those four forces, but there is no friction. There is no friction. Is it? There is friction? No. See, let me repeat. What is the, what is the first one? Gravity, which is not friction. Electromagnetic force, there is no name, no word friction in, in it. Weak nuclear force, there is no friction in it. Strong nuclear force, there is no friction in it. So, where does this friction belong to? Let's think about that. How does the friction come into play? So, see, if my object, this object, Okay, if this object is here and then uh, the chopping board is down here, that friction doesn't come into play. No friction. But when those two objects are in contact, right, so there is that frictional force which always acts in opposite direction. What does that mean? So when I lift it up, so the com uh, this object, right, so this object tends to slide down, right, slide down, right, and the force is upward is against the direction of the tendency of direction of motion i mean tendency of motion right if it tends to move downward the friction is upward right if something tends to move upward for example let me try something so see uh, this object now i put all the way at the bottom i dragged up i am pulling up in that case uh, there is one more force i am applying a new force and there is friction which is against the against the direction of the force which I apply, against the direction of motion. Make sense? Okay, so that is friction. Why is friction important? Where, do we, where, where else do we see friction? Right, so let me come back and explain my experiment. So when I use the smooth surface uh, on top of the chopping board of this object, right, so, and I lift it, after certain height, what happened? After I lifted a uh, certain, um, certain, uh, lifted to certain height, uh, the one end of chopping board, it started slide down, right? It started sliding down. But if I use the rough surface, what happens? Please watch. I need to lift one end of the chopping board significantly higher than the previous one. Okay? You see? You see? You see? You see? Now it started sliding. So, what does this mean? If the surface surfaces in contact are smoother if the surfaces in contact are smoother the friction is less the opposing force is less so that's why this object started sliding faster if i do if i use the rough surface the friction is higher so right so i'm not trying to tell you that friction is higher already but what i'm trying to tell you is it did not slide uh, until a significant uh, significant height was um, raised, uh, uh, this uh, one end of the chopping board was raised to a significant height, it did not start sliding. The reason was 
there was that opposing force which was significantly higher. So what does this show? This demonstrates that, see again, let me tell you, I am doing qualitative experiment. I'm not exactly measuring, but we can measure that. So when the two surfaces are in contact are rough, the friction is significantly higher. When they are smooth, when they are smooth, friction is significantly low. Okay? So that is friction. So what's the use of friction? Again, when we, when we try to walk, when we walk, there is friction between our feet and the floor and the ground and the road. So if there is no, no friction, can we walk? No. Can we walk in a, let's say, in icy road? This accidents happen all the time. When you are trying to walk in the icy road, you slip. You fall. Right? Why? There is not enough friction. Okay? Is friction always good? No. What happens? Like, for example, if we consider the moving parts of vehicles, let's say moving parts of a bicycle, let's consider moving parts of, let's say, car, let's consider moving parts of any other machines. So because of friction, what happens? So because of friction between the two objects, what happens? There is significant amount of energy loss. So a lot of energy is lost. So that is the evil part. As I mentioned, friction is a necessary evil. So that is the evil part. But without, can, we, can we survive without friction? No. We like to make life comfortable, like even for survival, friction is ne needed. Okay. So there is a branch of physics. There is a branch of physics you might be interested in that studies deals with friction is tribology. T R I B O L O Z Y. So tribology. T R I B O L O Z Y. Tribology. Some people also called tribology. So T R I B O L O Z Y. Tribology. So that is the branch of physics which deals with friction which deals with friction, which talks about friction, which does research in friction. So the governments all over the world or the institutions, they uh, spend a lot of money, a huge amount of money in the study of tribology, in the study of friction. How can friction be minimized? How can friction be used properly? Right? Why do, you want, why do you want to minimize friction in moving parts? The reason is because of friction, because of friction, there is waste of energy. When two objects are moved on top of each other and if there is friction between them, a lot of energy, a lot of work has to be done. A lot of energy is to be used. If that energy is converted into heat. That, in, that makes the object hotter. And the, see, the saddest part is we cannot retrieve that heat. We cannot use that heat. That is lost in the surrounding. That energy is wasted. Okay? So that's what one, uh, I wanted to introduce one concept. Uh, again, again, we are not away from Newton's laws of motion. But when we start, uh, uh, when we wa want to go deeper and deeper in Newton's laws of motion, we need to, to introduce friction at some point. So that's what I wanted to start. I wanted to introduce friction today. Make sense? So that is friction. That is friction. So friction is the force between two objects, between the two surfaces in contact. Right? That always, that has always a tendency to oppose the motion. It tries to oppose the motion. It doesn't support the motion. It opposes the motion. Make sense? For example, let's consider a little bit. Let's, let, let's make a little bit wider range for this. Is, the, is this the only friction? No, this is solid friction. Is there friction in liquids? Of course, yes. That friction is called viscous force or viscous drag. V, V for van. 
B-I-S-C-O-U-S. Viscous force. Viscosity. Viscous drag, whatever you call. Okay? Let me try to give you a small example. Let me try to give a small example. Suppose you have in a cup, you have water. Suppose you have water in a cup, so you try to pour water into another cup. Okay, what happens? It falls. It falls, it goes to another cup. Why? Why? There is gravity. There is gravity. Of this, instead of that, let's consider something like this. So in that cup, previously we considered water. Right? Suppose I have water in a cup or in a glass. Right? So if I, I don't have now, but if I, if I tilt it, the water will fall because of gravity, right? Because of gravity, right? Instead of that, instead of that, if we consider honey, if we put honey in it, what will happen? Put honey in it and try to uh, tilt this way. Watch, what the difference in motion. Previous case was what? Water falling down. What is the new case? What is the new case? Honey. Maha. Kudo. Whatever, uh, like uh, some dense liquid. Right? right? So what happens? So that, if you watch carefully, that also falls, but very slowly. Very slowly. Then we say, honey is more viscous than water. There is more opposing force. Honey has more viscosity. Molasses has more viscosity than compared to water. That is liquid friction. Does air offer friction? Yes, air drag. That is a very important force when airplane flies. When airplane flies, there is a viscous drag. So if airplane flies forward, viscous drag is backward. When an airplane is going forward, viscous drag is backward. Okay? So that is, there is friction. So we cannot uh, survive without friction. I mean, we can, everywhere we encounter friction. Okay? Now, let me try to connect uh, with a very important uh, concept. Right? I mentioned that there are only four kinds of fundamental forces. Gravity. Electromagnetic force, weak nuclear force, and strong nuclear force. Those are the four forces. So, friction comes under what category? Let's try to understand. Of course, that is not gravity. Weak nuclear force comes, uh, weak nuclear force uh, uh, comes into play only we consider the nuclei. Strong nuclear force, the same thing, atoms and nuclei. Nuclei, strong nuclear force, atoms and nuclei in weak, weak nuclear force. Right? But here, but here we are considering simply the surface and that surface. Right? So, when I put on top of each other, the, there is a contact force. What are in touch with each other? What are in contact each other? Of course, the molecules, the atoms between the two surfaces. What do atoms have? What are atoms made of? I told you guys in the first class. If you have, if you have, if you didn't get chance to watch it, I have uploaded in uh, YouTube. You can watch whenever you have time. So atoms have fundamentally three particles, right? As we understand as of now, as of today, what are the three particles? In the nucleus, in the center. There are protons with positive charge, neutrons with no charge. Protons are positively charged particles. What are they? They are positively charged particles. Neutrons, they have no charge. Where are they? They are in the nucleus. What are there outside? There are electrons moving, revolving around the nucleus. Right? So, according to new quantum theory, right, they form a kind of 
cloud. Right? They are all over. Right? They are all over. If you are little, if you are little children, probably suppose for example in hydrogen atom there is one electron. How can one electron be all over? Right? Please don't worry too much. Right? Please don't worry too much in that depth. But what you understand is there is electron which has negative charge and it is around the nucleus. Okay? So because of these electrons, because of the charge particles, right, between the two surfaces, there is electromagnetic force. And that force comes into play and gives rise to friction. Okay? Now, I would like to pose a question to you guys. I would like to ask you guys a question. What is my question? Suppose I make two surfaces smoother and smoother and smoother and smoother. Okay? I use, somehow, I sign the surface. Suppose I have a steel block. I have another steel block. I have a copper block or another copper block. I make the two surfaces smoother, 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 smoother some way. Now, will I increase friction between those two or decrease friction? It's a very challenging question. It's not an easy question. It's not an easy question, but please try to think about what's wrong in thinking. Okay? Please think about that. My question is again, let me repeat. Suppose we have two objects, two surfaces, two metallic surfaces, let's say, one steel block, another steel block, and I sign this. I make smoother, 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 and smoother, and then try to bring the two objects together and try to roll on, uh, move slide one on top of other. Is there more friction or less friction? That's a challenge question. A very challenging question. Please think about this. College students, if you are audience teachers, if you are audience here with me, right, in this program, please think about this question seriously. Okay? Okay? Please think about this. And there was another question. Uh, I mean, I, I would also like to ask you another question. So, um, uh, another. Uh, I mean, I would like to inform some other uh, additional thing on friction. So, these two, uh, this object was sliding on top of this, right? This object was sliding on top of this like this, right? Right? But now, think about this. Suppose I use small wheels, small rollers on, the, uh, on this. I attach small rollers on, uh, on this object, okay? Suppose I attach small um, rollers on this, like wheels. What will happen? Why? Why do you think people um, invent wheels? The wheels in our cars, the wheels in bicycle, the wheels in motorcycle. Why do you think wheels are better? What would have happened if there were no wheels? What is the benefit of having wheels? Suppose we don't have wheels. Instead of wheels, we have a block attached like attached to the engine of motorcycles, like the structure of motorcycles. Does it work? It does not. Why? Ask this kind of questions. Ask your teachers. Ask your parents. Ask me. Ask your seniors. Please never stop questioning. That's what Albert Einstein said. Never stop questioning. Please question. Please question. But you know, you know, I mean, you need to do some study too. If you just ask question for question, that doesn't help. Do some study. If your seniors or teachers direct you, please read this. And that, if, that might help. Just listening to my video for one hour does not help much. But if you, if you repeat this thing, if you do this thing, uh, if you are motivated on doing this, that would be awesome. And at that time, I would be so happy with you guys right, that the mission is successful. Right? So I introduced the concept of friction. So I would like to introduce another concept. That concept is this. 
I have this kind of object. Actually, my uh, my son's uh, uh, musical device. I don't know exactly what is the name of this, but he got a prize from his summer reading uh, from Worcester Public Library, right? So I have this object. You see, this object has one side it is bigger and uh, I mean uh, thicker. Other side it is narrower, right? So what will happen if I hold this? Like if I make a hole in here and then, or uh, uh, or if I at the, around the center, if I uh, use a string and suspend it, what will happen? It will go this way, right? Instead of that, let's consider this ruler. I have a ruler like this. You see, right? So what happens if I hold it? It doesn't go down. Right? See, please compare these two. If I hold it, see, it has a tendency to move that way. Right? But this object, no. This object, no. See, in the, um, if I hold around the center, it remains horizontal. It remains balanced. But here, if I hold it around the center, no, it goes down. Right? So, what is the concept here? If you are a student of higher level, if you are a college student or ninth or 10th grade students or teachers, can you please write what is happening here? What is the concept? Why this object remain horizontal? Why this object not? While I was holding here, okay, let me see. Okay, yeah, so what happens? So, there is a concept called center of gravity. Okay, yeah, I see that. Thank you so much. Yep, I see that center of gravity. And or you can call center of mass. They are, they are more or less similar, not exactly the same, but for now, they are equivalent for now, let's say. Center of mass and center of gravity are slightly different concepts, but uh, in these objects we can co uh, consider uh, more or less the same. Okay, so now I would like to give you a challenge and uh, my rest of the time will be spent completely in this experiment, in this demonstration. Every one of you, please be honest to yourself and do the experiment with me. Okay, please be very honest. Please don't try to cheat yourself. That's bad. Okay, right? Some, some, I mean, cheating is... Cheating might be good sometimes, but please don't do that in physics. Okay, what is the what is that uh, question? I will do that. Okay, so whatever you have, if you have a ruler, good. If you have a pencil with you, that's good. If you have a ball pen with you, that's good. Whatever you have, but any extended object, okay, any extended object has certain length like this. Okay, if you have a ball pen, great. If you have a pencil. Great. If you have a ruler, fantastic. Okay. So any kind of extended object. Okay. Or you can also try with uh, your remote. Please don't break your remote. Right. Your parents will be unhappy. Please don't do that. Okay. Whatever you have with you, that's fine. Okay. Okay. This is the this is the uh, demonstration I am going to do, and this is what I am going to ask you. Okay. Please follow the instruction. Please follow the rule. Okay, no tricking, no cheating. Okay, please be honest to yourself, not to me, and then do this experiment. Put this, put this uh, ruler, this meter stick, it's not meter stick actually, it is a 30 centimeter long, it's not a whole meter, right? Put on top of your fingers of the left hand and right hand like this. If you don't have ruler, please don't worry, you can use pencil. If you don't have pencil, whatever extended objects you have, please do that. Okay? Here is the instruction. Please follow me. Number one, please keep your one hand fixed when you do this experiment. What does that mean? This is my right hand. Okay? This is my right hand. Okay? This is my right hand. So I, I want to keep my right hand fixed. I don't move my right hand. For me. If you are, uh, if you are comfortable to move left hand, uh, I mean, not to move left hand, that's fine. 
So I, I, I fix my right hand like this and I move my left hand. Okay. So what I'm doing is, let me tell you, I, I fix my right hand and I move my left hand. But please don't hold like this. Please don't do like this. Don't hold like this. That's bad. That's not the goal of the experiment. Okay. So my, my question to you, please do. I mean, before you do, I would like to ask you a prediction. What does physics do? Physics always starts with prediction. Okay. So please predict. Before you do the experiment, please predict. Don't do the experiment, but predict. And then we'll start doing experiment. What is the, predi what is the question for prediction? So you will move one of the hands, one of your two hands, not both, only one, and move the other hand. My question to you guys is this. Where do, where do the two hands meet? Or, or does, the meter, does the ruler fall? If you have a uniform object like this of the same thickness, same uh, everywhere, same mass, not like this, not like this, right? So my question to you is, my question to you is, when, where do the two hands meet? Can you do the prediction? Please don't do the experiment now. We are trying to do prediction. Do you follow my question? So one hand, you cannot move both hands. That's the first thing. You cannot move both hands. You hold, you put the ruler or pencil or pen, whatever you have, on top of your, on top of your uh, fingers, uh, one finger of each hand. And you are allowed to move only one hand, not both. Either the left hand, uh, sorry, right hand or the left hand. My question is, my question is, where do the two hands meet? Does this object fall? That's the question. Okay, I see some prediction. Now, please start doing the experiment. I will also do with you. I will also do with you. You can watch, right? So, I am not moving my right hand, okay? If I am moving, I am cheating. Please catch me. If I am moving my right hand, that is cheating. That, so, like, so if I do that, please catch me. Okay? So I am not moving my right hand. So my right hand is there. Okay? And then I move only my left hand. I move only my left hand. Where did it meet? Did the meter st stick fall? Okay, I can read. This is 30 centimeter long and uh, uh, my two fingers met each other 50, uh, about 15 centimeter away. 15 centimeter in the middle. Why? Why is that? This is extremely important concept. You try to understand it based on two explanations based on two explanations which I did today. One is friction, the other is center of mass. This very simple demonstration can be done everywhere in the class. Can we do in Joomla? Of course, yes. Can I do in Bhospur? Yes. Because I must have, I, mean, I can have a pencil or I can have a bamboo stick Please use the gadgets, use the devices, use the things around you to bring into classroom. My friends, my teacher's friends, use the gadgets, use the devices, use the objects around you in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in your dining room, wherever you are. Use, make the use best out of it. Explain physics. Right? So I am using this and this is explaining two very, very important concepts, friction and center of mass. Let me try to explain to you. Or uh, uh, let me give you one or two minutes. Let me give you one or two minutes. It is a friction. I see, I see one comment there. Yeah, that's right. There is a friction. And uh, there is a, a friction and center of mass. But it is not easy to explain. Yes, that's friction, right? That's friction, right? 
friction is correct and center of, another concept is center of mass that's also correct so let me try do this object which has different uh, uh, i mean different mass distribution not uniform okay let me do the same thing let me do the same thing i am uh, i'm i'm repeating the same thing my right hand is fixed okay this time let me let me move my right hand right that i think that is a little bit easier let me do that See, I already passed the center. I already passed the center. Right, see? Right, so I my two hands don't meet exactly at the geometrical center of this, somewhere, somewhere else. Why? This object is not uniform. More mass is here. So the center of mass doesn't lie at the center. For this object, the center of mass lies at the center. Okay. For the students, for the children who have never heard center of mass, what is that? Center of mass is the concept. Center of mass is this object has mass, right? This object has mass. So, tomorrow, uh, Monday, don't give you that, sir. Don't give you a little bit, I believe don't give you is our national game. Is that right? So, don't give you. So, don't give you a little bit. Tomorrow, sir, you are a dandy, you know, you are a dandy, you know. And you would have beyond, right? Right? And I'm here, or some. I'm here, or some. Tell us a slightly, you would have a catheter slightly utsalera, slightly lift guard, or some. Tell us, here comes some. Right? Here comes some. Like this. And then the, uh, uh, and then we uh, repeat the, uh, repeat uh, like uh, hitting it, right? There are some rules. Let's not worry about that. Kyun Zada. त्यो डन्डीबियो को बियो को सेन्टर अफ मास मा तपाईले हिर्काउनु भयो भने दट डज नट रोटेट नो दैट्स द आइडिया अफ सेन्टर अफ मास सो व्हाट इज द सेन्टर अफ मास सेन्टर अफ मास इज द पोइन्ट राइट सेन्टर अफ मास अफ दिस अब्जेक्ट इज द पोइन्ट इफ यू अप्लाई फोर्स ऑन दैट द अब्जेक्ट क्यान मूव इन अ स्ट्रेट लाइन और इन सम डायरेक्शन बट इट डज नट रोटेट सो ऑल द मास इज Imagine all the mass is concentrated at that point. That's the center of mass. For example, if we have this kind of object, the center of mass is around here. If I, like for example, if I hit here, if I put on the surface and hit on, 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 the, on, on one side, so it will rotate. Okay, so this may not apply enough force, but this will rotate. Right, so what happens here? At the center of mass, if you apply a force at the center of mass, of an object what will happen if you apply center uh, force on center of mass of the object the object simply translates it moves in one direction but it does not rotate it does not rotate make sense right so now let's go back here let's go back here the ruler okay so what is happening here probably uh, you might have thought something let me uh, explain this okay so see this is my right hand what did I do? I was not letting me myself move my right hand was fixed. The left hand, I am moving. Left hand, I am moving. I am not moving my right hand. See, after a while, I cannot move my left hand. I cannot. I try, but physics does not allow me. I try to move my left hand, but physics does not allow me. Why? The reason is this. There is now more friction. How? How? See, please watch. Please watch. I'm I, I'm not moving my right hand. I'm moving my left hand. Right? See, after a while, after a while, I cannot move my left hand. But the, now, the ruler starts moving. Why? Because, see here, there is more and more weight on top of my finger in the right hand. More and more weight means more and more friction. How can we connect that to everyday life? For example, consider a bicycle. Bicycle has more mass than motorcycle. Is that right? No, that's opposite. Motorcycle has more mass than bicycle. Car has more mass than motorcycle. Truck has more mass than car. So if you go on increasing the mass, the friction between them and the surface, uh, the their wheels and the surface also goes up. There is a formula. Don't worry too much at this point. Force of friction is equal to 
mu times normal reaction coefficient of friction times normal reaction if you are a college students or teachers or uh, higher level students you already know so friction is proportional to the normal reaction which is uh, which is related to mass which is related to weight w e i g s t weight m z okay so what happens here so what happens here let's try to connect that connect with that so i am not moving my right hand right i am not moving right during the whole experiment i don't move my right hand i am teaching you physics not cheating not doing magic i am teaching you physics okay so please watch here so watch here i am not moving my right hand i am moving my left hand okay after a while i cannot move my left hand now the ruler moves now the ruler moves please watch why on top of my right hand there is more mass there is more friction right more friction so because of that the ruler is opposed to move and see finally see i have not moved my right hand my left hand goes and meets at the center of the ruler make sense okay okay so with that with that so i i am going to end the session in a few minutes so let let's do a quick review what did we learn today we learned two very very important concepts center of mass and friction okay friction and center of mass tapai haru little children hunu sundai hunu cha tapai haru ko parents sanga tapai ko bua ama sanga tapai ko dai didi sanga sundai hunu cha bhane tapai sanga copy ra pen cha bhane lekhnus these two concepts i will ask next time can you please write friction i can help you spelling with spelling f f a b c d e f f f for fan like f r i c t i o n friction parents and teachers please help please help f r i c t i o n friction did you write it so that's the concept we learned about we learned about friction number 1 what did we learn else what what else did we learn center of mass c e n t e r by the way i am in the united states in the united states we write c e n t e r but in nepal we follow british english we write c e n t r e so whatever you write that's fine c e n t e r of o f of a separate word center of mass m a s s mass or you can write center of gravity so we learned these two concepts so i would like to ask you a very challenge question before i go okay before i end this video before i end this uh, physics is fun episode 3 i believe session i'll ask you a challenge question okay how is the center of mass concept very useful this challenging question is not for little children this challenging question is for students of higher class teachers okay the challenging question is this please calculate the center of mass of the moon and the earth assuming that there are none of other objects around us one is the earth other is the moon please calculate the center of mass please calculate the center of mass of the two objects the earth and the moon my next question is please also try to calculate the center of mass of the earth and the sun you can you, you can find the data or you google it you you guys are you guys are born in the luckiest time actually why what does that mean it's a very good time knowledge is everywhere in the internet you can google it if you have some uh, internet access uh, if you have book you can find this in book so please do these two questions calculate the calculate the center of mass calculate the center of mass of the moon and the earth question number 1 question number 2 calculate the center of mass of the earth and the sun okay you can find the mass of the earth which is about 6 times 10 to the power 24 kg mass of the sun which is about 2 uh, times 10 to the power 30 kg you can find the distances please calculate that 
Calculate the center of mass of the sun and the earth. Calculate the center of mass. So that means where is it located? How far from the earth? How far from the earth uh, is the center of mass of the earth and the moon? How far from the earth is the center of mass from the, of the earth and the sun? This challenge question. And now, a, a little bit advanced question for the teachers. If you guys are, pa, pa, if, if in the audience there are some teachers, uh, another challenging question. Please find a, 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 a binary stars. Please find binary stars. Google. Find binary stars and calculate the center of mass. You will see very interesting thing. Okay, so three questions, three challenges. One is for uh, school and college level students. Center of mass between the earth and the moon. Center of mass of the uh, sun and the earth. And a little bit challenging question. Calculate the, so find uh, some information about binary stars. What are binary stars? Binary stars are two stars of, of the same masses, right? And they rotate about each other. They don't rotate, uh, I mean, they, they revolve about each other. Common center of mass, like that. Right? For example, what do we see? The moon is going around the earth. What do we see? The earth is going around the sun. Right? But if you consider the uh, binary stars, the binary stars move about the common center of mass. Okay? Why? They have identical mass. So, uh, with, the, with those three questions, Question number one, please calculate the position or the location of the center of mass of the moon and the earth, how far it is away from the earth. Number one. Number two, calculate the center of mass, the distance from the earth, okay, the common point, what we are calling center of mass, right, between the earth and the sun. And the third question is please calculate the center of mass of two binary stars. Okay? Okay? So, we are, see, I am making background to understand Newton's laws better. I, I am not done with Newton's laws of motion. I will never be done, actually, because Newton's laws of motion are so vast. Probably you might be feeling a kind of bored. Rudra is always talking about Newton's laws of motion. What is that? Yeah, we need to understand Newton's laws of motion. We really need to understand Newton's laws of motion. Newton's laws of motion, whatever easy they seem to be, they are not. We need to understand a lot. As I mentioned in the, my first video, in my first, uh, uh, first, uh, uh, first uh, day, right? Newton's laws, if you understand Newton's laws of motion, you understand most part of the universe. Believe me or not. One day in future, if you study physics, you will realize, oh, uh, I, I, I watched this Facebook program with Rudra Kafle. Right? He was telling us this kind of thing, and that is real actually. Right? You will realize that. Right? So Newton's laws of motion, they seem to be easy, but they are not. If you understand Newton's laws of motion, you understand a big chunk of universe. Do you understand everything? Of course not. Of course not. Right? There are a lot of mysteries in the universe. Okay? So, please, please, uh, uh, never stop questioning. Please never stop questioning. Please stay safe. This is a very difficult time in the world now with the coronavirus. Please stay safe. Please stay tuned. We will be enjoying physics with fun. Thank you so much. Good night in Nepal and have a good day in the United States of America. And if you are in other different places, please yeah, uh, enjoy the day. Thank you.